Bees have one of the biggest impacts on biodiversity and food production. However, populations across the world are declining at an alarming rate, and that's mainly due to habitat loss, climate change and pesticide use. So this is one of the trees in our study. This is Tilia tormentosa, silver lime. Could this be the answer to our plummeting bee population? We have sensors in these trees. And these sensors um, are helping us count the number of bumblebees that are visiting. So the sensors are really small and they don't actually uh, record any sound. Instead, they, um, they detect the wing beat frequency of the bumblebee. At Wakehurst in Sussex, scientists are trying to figure out which of their trees the bees prefer. We haven't heard of any other studies doing anything like this before. You know, if you think about the tree's footprint, it's very small, but they're huge 3D structures covered in pollen and nectar, which are essential resources for pollinators. So we really wanted to think about which are the best trees for bees that we can plant to, to inform landscape planners, urban architects. The brand new study then monitors the results in real time. These heat maps show us the highest uh, abundance of the bumblebees visiting the trees. They're hoping to help solve a growing ecological crisis. Nearly 90% of our flowering plants depend on uh, the contribution of uh, pollinators. What we do know is that um, in the UK, the population of flying insects in the last 20 years has decreased by around 60%. And with that becomes um, crop yield instability and the loss of a, an essential ecosystem service. Bees are a fundamental part of our delicate ecosystem, but around the world their numbers are plummeting. Yet scientists warn not enough research is being done to understand why or how to reverse it. Researchers here have also begun gathering DNA directly from bees and their pollen. And how do you do it without getting stung? Um, a lot of practice. So we'll try and get this bee smoothly just sort of wait for it to land and forage, and then we can try and scoop it up from the flower. The hopes that this could inform sort of urban planting schemes, landscape design, um, any sort of situation where you're thinking, oh, I've got this tiny space and it's in a sort of urban area, what should I plant? We can look at our data and go, well, we, we've shown that this flower, these bees love this specific flower. It's part of a wider project at Wakehurst where researchers are hoping to use the more than 500 acre site to find more nature based solutions to climate change. The stakes couldn't be higher, really. We know that we're facing these twin crises of biodiversity loss and climate change and we really need to make sure that we are doing science that people can use that can influence policy that can help landowners and really uh, change what people understand and what they can do to make a difference bees and pollinators are essential for life as we know it on earth scientists here hope that by helping them we help ourselves rachel venables sky news in sussex